In this video we're going to take a look at the persistence challenge on Hack the Box. So this is an easy forensics challenge and the description says we've, we, we're noticing some strange connections from a critical PC that can't be replaced. We've run an AV scan to detect the malicious files and reboot the box, but the connections get re-established. We've taken a backup of some critical system files. Can you help us figure out what is going on? So let's start by downloading the file. We open up the archive and let's take a local copy of it. It's called Query. Put in a password, hack the box. And let's do some basic file checks. So first thing we'll do is check the file type. And we'll see that it's a Microsoft Windows registry file, NT2000 or above. Let's have a look at the strings. Let's do strings-n10, query. We get quite a lot of strings here. Let's um, scroll through them, see if anything sticks out to us. We could try to grep for hack the box or for flag, things like that. You'll notice here that we have what looks like some directory paths, but it doesn't really make any sense. And here we have P, which you'd expect this to maybe be a C or a D drive or something. So let's, um, looks like these have been rotated. Let's grab a copy of these and let's go to CyberChef. We'll go to rot 13 paste that in and yeah you can see here that this was what do we have at the top you can see the snipping tool has been um, is, is rot 13 there do we have anything of interest so regedit looks like it's been used don't see any flags or anything which is pointing us to a flag so let's um, Let's move on from that for now. So what we probably want to do is try and see how we can deal with um, this registry file. So let's uh, get the file type again there and let's just copy and paste this. Just Google this first of all. MS Windows registry file. <coughs> see a 2012 article from Rapid7 here. Also a volatility cheat sheet. So note that in one of our previous challenges there, I think the last video or the video before, we um, use volatility to extract some registry hives and then we did some analysis on those so there's some looks like there's some good links around here about registry forensics let's um, have a look at the rapid 7 article and we can see here that we have different uh, it's, it explains that we have different registry hives so when you open reg regedit it's opening many different hives so we have system software SAM security or in a user's profile ntuser.dat and they store system information and configurations, user information, all sorts of interesting information. So we can scroll through this, it looks like this is kind of going into the actual format of the registry hive which is probably not um, required for us here. So let's um, Let's close that for now. Let's also search for the name of the f the name of the challenge was persistence. So we've got an idea that persistence is going to be something to do with it. So how do we achieve uh, registry persistence? All right, here's a, an article here. Persistence registry run keys. And this explains that registry keys can be added from the terminal to the run keys to achieve persistence. These will contain a reference to the actual payload that will be executed when a user logs in. The following registry locations is known to be used by threat actors and red teams to use this method of persistence. So you can see that the, there's this, this registry key, H key, current user, software, Microsoft, Windows, current version and run and then we also have run once, run services, run services once and then it basically gives a, an executable to run each time that the systems that the system will load. So let's um, now we've got a little bit of background about how, how persistence is achieved and what the registry hive files are let's see if we can go and analyze this file a little bit further. So we'll minimize this and I'm just going to type in reg here 
and then hit tab and see what kind of tools that we have. So we have a regedit here, although I'm not too sure how well this would work for us. It in Linux not something I've used before. Let's see, regedit dash oops dash h. Yeah, so it looks like it's actually trying to find the Windows files. Um, so let's skip that one. What else do we have if we look for reg? We have a reg db dump. Um, okay. Don't know what that's. Let's try and pass it our query. Yeah, nothing. Cool. Let's move on to the next tool reg ripper and reg. Red shell. Let's try that out. Red shell dash h. Oh wow. Um, dash dash help, dash dash help. Then um, I, sometimes I hate Linux. Um, here we have our list of commands. Authentication options. Sign encrypt. So uh, what does it take? It takes in dash f and the file or a remote server. We have a hive file here. So let's do dash f and query we run that and then if we hit tab we've got some commands available to us so let's do info you can see that there's 10 sub keys here um, let's do list and these are the different locations so if we go back to our um, to us to the site that we were looking at here we had the HK current user software Microsoft Windows current version let's go back here we have software right here let's CD if we can into software now let's LS okay and then Microsoft Windows current version so we'll CD into Microsoft LS CD into it was Windows right CD into Windows Yep. Um, what do we have here? Okay, current version we want to go to. Let's CD into current version. And we have a lot of stuff here. We're looking for run or run once or run services. So, what were our options again? We have a print option. Can we print run? No such value as run. Can we print run once? No. Okay. What can we print? Run. Um, okay. Let's try and go into run. CD run. Oh, and look what we have here. We have Windows update. And then uh, it's pointed to a system32 executable file. Okay. Um, let's. It looks like a quite a suspicious name. Let's go to Cyberchef. and paste this in here and let's do some magic and we've got nothing let's take out the exe and now we do have something so it's gone from base 64 and it's successfully extracted a flag so that was just a base 64 encoded flag which had been set persistently to run on execute and had been hidden to look like um, a windows update and there we go, there's the flag. So before we move on to the next challenge, what I will do is try and have a look at some other tools here um, to see how else we could have solved the challenge. So if we run this time Reg Ripper, and we get a user interface here, it asks us for a Hive file, so let's give it one. So we are in desktop, CTF, Hack the box, forensics, persistence, and we'll give it the query. It's asking for a report file, so presumably where do we want to put the report? We'll just put it here, report, save that, and then we have a plugin file where we can do all NT user all SAM security software system. So looking at our um uh, let's let's try and run all. Zero plugins completed with errors. Okay, is and it is done presumably. So we have our report. Let's check it out. .txt. Here we have a report and so all dumps. So it's dumped all the keys here. Let's 
you can see there's quite a lot going on. Um, okay, so it's just dumped all the keys there for us. I was kind of expecting a little more. Dumps entire registry hives. Let's. Uh, scans a, f a high file looking for binary value data that contains MZ. Okay, let me go back and open Red Ripper again. Let's give it the query and we'll save it to the same report. Yeah, let's replace it. Let's do NT user all because it's the NT user stuff that we're interested in as uh, I've closed down the link but it was specified on the the article we were looking at it says two two plugins completed with errors this time and it looks like there's a lot more going on so let's close that down let's open up the report .txt all right still dumping the entire registry high by the looks of it does it do anything else this time though it looks like there's a lot more content here so these are all dumped yeah okay so after all these are dumped what do we what sort of stuff do we have uh, we have these plugins. It's trying to find the Adobe Acrobat version. It's trying to um, auto run. It's looking for auto run policies. It's looking to see uh, Internet Explorer plugins. Check for IOCs for Clampy. Okay, looking for looking for a potential malware. Um, Domains, we have our environment data, so it's finding the temp uh, path. Okay, what we would be interested in is persistence. Do we can we search for persistence? No, can we search then for uh, the run? Run once, run once was not found, run not found, but it did find this current versions run and it did find our windows update.exe. So we could have um, we could have also used this method to get our uh, exe and then go and decode that. Cool. Um, how else could we have done it? Let me remove these report files and let's take this over to our Windows VM and see how we could have uh, done this in there. So we've moved over to the Commando VM. Um, as we mentioned on previous videos, this is like a Windows version of Kali with a lot of pen testing tools and stuff on it and it makes it quite easy to install and update packages you can see here I'm just running through updating all of the the packages that we have here um, so let's see what tools we have in here if we go into let's try what's this tools section and forensics so I have an offline registry view here and a registry explorer. Let's check them out. Offline registry view. Okay. It looks like do we need to supply? Uh, it doesn't look like that's opened the the file that I dragged into it. Let's see what we have here. Exit, find, copy, refresh, save. Find, no. Options. Okay, it looks like this is just dealing with the actual registry. I don't, doesn't seem to be any way to deal with a registry file, so maybe we'd have to load that first, so I'm not going to bother. Or maybe, do we need to change the extension? I'm going to change that to nt-user. That's not going to change the extension there, is it? Yeah, it did. Okay. Let's just try that again. Doesn't look any better for us. Alright, it doesn't even give you an option. You have to manually type in the address of everything there. So let's um, try a, a better tool, hopefully. So we have Registry Explorer. Drag our nt-user.dat in there. Okay, finished updating. Uh, so it's loaded our registry. Let's work our way through. So this is just the same as we had in in Kali whenever, or not Kali in Parrot. Whenever we um, went through and used Red Shell, we had this same environment. It's just we were CDing and 
listing rather than manually going through. So if we wanted to manually go through, there's probably some cool options here in terms of yes, we can you know search for things. Um, there's options for recovery, recovering deleted values and stuff as well. So we know that we were looking for persistence, and it was in software, Microsoft, um, Windows, current version, run. And if we go there, we see we have the Windows update and we have this key. So there's another way we could have done this. Off the top of my head as well, we could use autopsy. Let's let's boot up autopsy. It's probably a bit overkill for this, but autopsy, if you were looking at like a full uh, image, would probably be one of the, one of the best tools. Autopsy and FTK Imager are probably my two favorites for dealing with um, forensics challenges and looking at images and stuff. I don't think we can use FTK Imager for let me try, we'll go image file, we'll see if we can actually load nt-user.dat into FTK Imager. Unrecognized file system, no, it doesn't look... Nope, so that's not too much use for us, but what about if we go to autopsy? Is it going to let me create a new case? Yeah, okay, new case, persistence. And that's going to make us fill in stuff there, is it? Okay, just case number one, that's fine. Take a little while to boot up, but you can see already just from the GUI here that we have quite a lot of uh, useful features here. We're going to be adding a data source here, so we could be adding an, an actual disk. In, in our case, disk image, we could be adding an actual hard drive or a logical file, which we're using in our case. So we want to add our desktop nt user dot dat next will give us a load of options here retrieving you know hash lookups email parsing things like that I'll just hit next but it's not gonna be able to do too much for us because this is just a registry file normally it would be you know you'd be passing in an image which contains the registry the registry hives but also contains a lot more than what we're looking at in this case if we go in here logical file we have our nt user dot dat we can select that and we can access the application down here. So we can go into software, Microsoft, um, Windows, current version, run. And then we have our Windows update value, which we could be checking here. Um, and yeah, that's the... Uh, that's this challenge and a couple of different ways to do it in both Linux and Windows. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them down below. Thanks.